Hey guys, it is Jen with Mother Time and today I'm gonna to take you along as I do some updates in the kitchen to give it a fresh new look. I'm not ready to tackle a major renovation in the kitchen yet like changing out countertops or even painting the cabinets, but just doing a few simple subtle changes can totally transform a space. So I'm gonna be taking you along as I change out the door pulls, even moving the microwave, changing out the kitchen faucet, which I can't wait to show you that, even changing out the light fixture in the kitchen dining area and adding some faux beams in the kitchen dining area as well. And just these few little changes totally transforms the space without doing a major renovation. So I cannot wait to show you the before and after. So let's head into the kitchen to get started. Here is a peek of the kitchen before. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is take the microwave down. I know it might not be ideal for everybody, but I really want this space without the microwave. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. So I'm gonna get on the ladder, Wayne's helping me hold it, and then we're just gonna pull it down to see what it looks like behind without the microwave. I'm still gonna have a microwave in the kitchen. I'm just getting a different one and I'm going to relocate it where it is and I'll be showing you that soon. It is day two of the kitchen update. Last night, we got a head start and took down the microwave to see how it looks. And now looking back at the footage with the microwave there, it's such a difference. It's a subtle difference, but I love it. Now the microwave is not such a focal point. So I'm really excited about it. And I'm gonna show you here in just a minute where I'm gonna put a microwave. So that's coming up. But let me show you first. So I patched the wall and sanded it down and now it's ready to paint. And I'm just gonna paint this with Sherwin-Williams and the color Alabaster to go along with the rest of the house. Once I have it painted, I'm gonna decide what to do. I have a few ideas. May hang a pot rack here. I also have a piece of old wood that I was thinking about hanging here too. But I'm gonna figure that out once I have it painted and then play around, play around with it a little bit. So that is one of the little subtle updates I'm gonna be doing in the kitchen. The next kitchen update I'm gonna be making is changing the cabinet hardware. That is such an easy way to change the look of a kitchen without doing anything drastic or doing any major renovation. I have considered for some time to paint the cabinets white, but I'm not quite ready to do so yet. So changing the hardware is just an easy way to change the look of the kitchen. These door pulls I've had on here for quite some time. So it's just going to be a nice little update to change those out. Those door pulls are actually supposed to arrive here tomorrow. So we'll be changing those out tomorrow, but that is on the list of things to do. But today I'm gonna to be tackling this and another few other little projects. And then tomorrow when the door pulls come in, I'll be changing those out. And I cannot wait to show you how a simple subtle change like changing the hardware on your kitchen cabinets can change the look of a kitchen. I'm also gonna be updating the kitchen faucet and I cannot wait for you to see the one that I chose. It's actually coming in tomorrow as well. And that is another easy way to change the look of a kitchen without making major changes like changing countertops or cabinets or anything like that by simply adding a new faucet can really change the look and the feel of the kitchen. So that will be changing tomorrow along with the door pulls. The next update in the kitchen is adding faux beams in the kitchen dining area using this two by four and some stain. So the plan is to hang two beams in this space as well, and then possibly change out the light fixture. I love this light fixture and I get asked about it all the time. It's from Lowe's. We've had it here for quite some time, many years. Um, and then I think back in 2015, I even spray painted it black. So this light fixture goes back for quite some time. So I'm ready for just a simple, subtle change as much as I love this light fixture. So I found this one at Lowe's. I love that lantern cage lighting to give my kitchen like that cozy cottage look. So this one, before I actually take the other one down, I'll have Wayne hold this one up too, and then I'll decide which one I like better. So the other one may stay, the original one, but for a simple, subtle update without doing any drastic changes, just simply changing light fixtures and chandeliers is an easy way to change the look of a space. So I'll be changing this or seeing if I'm gonna change this one as well. And finally, the other change I'm making is putting a microwave over here in the coffee bar area. I found this really pretty microwave. It is from the beautiful collection by Drew Barrymore at Walmart. I just love that very clean, sleek line. I like the color on it too. So I decided it would be best over here because it's kind of tucked away a little bit. It's not front and center in the kitchen, but it 
it's still accessible. I don't use it that much just to maybe heat up some coffee or just to do a little reheating here and there, but it's nice and it's handy. So I'll have it tucked here and then I decided to get the coffee maker too that matches it because my hope, fingers crossed, that both of them will fit over here in the space, the coffee maker and the microwave. So the plan is to put those both over here and hoping for the best that they both fit and then they'll just kind of be tucked away here um, in this little space and then it's kind of a little bit out of the way. Now it's time to paint the wall and the color we are painting it is Sherwin-Williams in the color alabaster, but I actually change it here down the road to just plain white to match the tile. And while we were painting, I decided to give the cabinets a really good scrub, do a good spring clean, and we also painted underneath the cabinets. It is now day three and things haven't gone quite as planned, but that is okay. The good news is the door poles came in, so I'm excited to unbox those and see how they look. So the reason why things got a little delayed, well, first off, let me show you the wall behind the stove is now painted. I love it. That is Sherwin-Williams Alabaster. I wanted to show you from a distance how it looks with the cabinet color. And it's funny because in some light, it looks like almost the same color as the cabinets. But what we did yesterday is we took some time and really scrubbed these cabinets from top to bottom. And it was well worth that extra time and effort to do that. Since I was taking on this project, I said, let's give these a good clean too. So did a little spring cleaning, got them really scrubbed down, way up on the top too, got on the step stool, cleaned that all off too. And so now I feel better about that. So we also painted underneath the cabinets as well. These were never painted underneath, um, gave them a really good scrub and then painted underneath too. So I'm happy about that. So we spent the time since we had the paint out, painted underneath there as well. I actually had everything off of the counters and then I wasn't filming when I kind of just put, at first I was going to put everything back pretty much the way it was. And then I, I moved a few things around. I put the basket in the corner just as I was playing around. So I don't know, I may move things again too. So today I'm going to get a tension rod and hang that here with some S hooks and see how the pots and pans look. I may do that today. I may wait until I have the door pulls put in and the faucet. The faucet will actually be here tomorrow. So today is gonna to be the door pulls as well since we got so busy with the cabinets yesterday doing the light fixture. So we're gonna unbox that as well and see how that looks hung up. Oh, and then the other thing is too, is I have to go to the hardware store because the stain that I got for the beam, we tested it out a little bit and I don't like the color. So I need another color stain too before we even tackle the beams too. So let's unbox those door pulls and see how they look. I'm so excited to see. I'm so excited to unbox these door pulls and change out the ones that I have on the cabinets right now. The ones that I have, I've had on there for about 10 years and they're starting to fall apart and break when I open the cabinet. So this is going to be a very functional change as well as a pretty change. These are from Amazon. I'll link them below. They are an antique brass and wait till you see, they are so pretty. And I thought a really good price to compare to what you would pay at the hardware store. Look at how pretty they are. So Wayne and I are going to work together. I'm gonna get them all taken out of the packaging. I'm gonna do a few and then he jumps in and he's going to hang them while I take them out of the packaging. These door pulls come in different sizes. I'm using the three inch door pulls because I didn't want to make any additional holes. I just wanted to use the existing holes we had. And I just love the way these look. It's such a simple, subtle change. But even the previous door pulls that we had on the cabinets before the ones that we're taking off were a darker pull as well. So this is such a change for me and I absolutely love the way they look. We're gonna to continue to unbox them and get them all on the cabinets and you will see here later in the video how it all looks. The faucet came in, I'm so excited. I have not peeked yet to see what it looks like. Let's hope I like it. 
here. It is, oh, look at that beauty. It is a copper faucet, you guys. I cannot, I cannot look at it. Okay, we, let's take it out of the box and see how it looks next to the sink. But that's a little peek of it. It's got the gooseneck too. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Wayne is going to install the faucet and I'll show you what it looks like all together later in the video. Here's a little peek he was holding up for me and I absolutely love it. In the meantime, I'm going to finally unbox the microwave and the coffee maker and get that set up. Look how pretty this microwave is. I love it. It fits perfectly in this space. My kids even love it, so that's another plus. Now I'm gonna get the coffee maker unboxed and put it next to the microwave. The one thing I had to give up in the space was unfortunately my lamp. I loved having it in the space, but it wasn't going to fit here. So I ended up adding some of my battery operated puck lights to the space instead. Next, I wanted to show you some of the copper pots that I recently found at the thrift store. This beautiful Paul Revere copper pot was only $8.99, plus I had a 20% off coupon. I wanna show you how I clean my copper it's so easy, you just need vinegar and salt. There's no exact measurement. I don't use any kind of exact measurement. I just add some vinegar on top, sprinkle it with some salt, and then scrub it in and let the magic happen. Also, I just use plain old table salt, nothing fancy. I generously sprinkle that on top of the vinegar. You can also work in sections too, but I just pour all of the vinegar on top, sprinkle it with the salt then I get my little brush or my sponge and I just start rubbing it in and you can see here it instantly starts cleaning it up and if I feel that it needs it I'll add more vinegar and our salt and continue to scrub it until it's all clean once I'm happy with the way it looks I'm going to rinse it off and then dry it with the towel Look how beautiful this copper pot cleaned up with just vinegar and salt. I also found this Paul Revere copper pot at the thrift store for only $6.99. Plus I had my 20% off coupon. I'm going to clean this one up with vinegar and salt. I'm gonna get it started and then Wayne came down and saw me cleaning it and wanted to jump in on the fun. So he's gonna finish it up. Now I've also cleaned copper with Barkeeper's Friend. That works good too. But honestly, I just love using the vinegar and salt because I always have it on hand and it's an easy way to clean copper. Let me know in the comments what your favorite way of cleaning copper is. And I plan on using these new thrifted copper pots on my pot rack above my stove. And look how pretty this pot cleaned up too. Now it's finally time to unbox the new light fixture. And boy, oh boy, did they have this one wrapped up pretty good. There was just so much plastic. So Wayne's gonna get it all unwrapped and then hold it up. And of course I like it. So he's gonna switch this out for me. We ended up switching out the light fixtures and you'll see that coming up shortly. Next, it's time to hang the beams. First, Wayne is starting by finding a stud, which is incredibly important, especially when hanging some beams. So he's got a stud finder looking for them. 
Then here is our stained two by four. We ended up staining it with Minwax in the color Early American. He ended up measuring out the wall and then he's cutting the board down. And then he is going to add some pilot holes. We are adding holes at each of the ends and then in the center. Then he's going to add some finish holes. And then he is going to set the screws first before we end up getting it up on the wall. He is using grip right number nine screws. They are the three inch screws. So he's also gonna put those in first so it's easy once we have the board up there to hang this to. The one thing he says he wished he also added was a little bead of subfloor glue on the back of it too. But we'll do that when we add the beams in the living room. Sneak little peek, we're gonna be doing some beams here in the living room too and I'll show you those once we get those up. Next we're going to hang the beam and that is why it's so important to get the screws set in place first so once the beam is in place you can easily drill it into the stud. I also wanted to show you the beams up close. These are just two by fours from Lowe's. I looked for ones that were really roughed up and distressed and Wayne did a fantastic job staining them. And again, I used Minwax in the color Early American. We just applied one light coat and they look fantastic. And then once the beams were in place, he ended up using just a little bit of wood filler to hide the screw holes. Last night we got the beams and the light fixture installed and look at how pretty it looks. It really warms up the space, makes it feel so cozy, but yet it's just a simple, subtle change in the kitchen dining area. So I wanted to show you, step back and show you how pretty that looks with both of the beams. Really warms up the space so nicely. And then with the light fixture too, it's so pretty, but just a simple change. I also added to the table, I changed out the chairs. These wicker chairs were in the living room that I brought in, and of course I love them here. So it's just really pretty. This morning I had coffee sitting here too. It was, it was so cozy. But I wanted to show you the two chairs that I also have here too. So I have these black dining chairs that I added that look really nice in the space. But then I also found at the thrift store very similar chairs, which I also have the one back there too. So I have one of each. So when I was at the thrift store, actually a few days ago, I saw these chairs and I thought they were really pretty, but they only had two and I usually want to at least get a set of four. Um, and they only had the two and I loved them, but I didn't know, I didn't know what I was going to do with just two. And then as I, once I switched the chairs out, I said, I need those two. I went back to the thrift store. I'm like, I hope they still have them. Of course they did. They were only $7.99 and then of course I had my 20% off coupon so I got them for $6.40. There's a little love on them but that's okay. I don't mind that worn look. I can also clean them up a little bit with you know, you know, pen, a furniture pen. But like I said, I don't mind them. But I just pulled them from the car so I'm definitely going to scrub them down a little bit and wash them up. But I think I'm gonna keep these in here instead. So let me swap those out and show you how it looks but the black ones look good too. And that's the nice thing, that's the beauty, is just changing a couple of chairs. So if I want to every once in a while, change it up, maybe put the black ones here, or put the wood ones here. I mean, for the price, you couldn't beat that. So that was a thrift store find. Well, those chairs were a thrift store find that I think are gonna look really pretty in the space. I also found at the thrift store, these really pretty candle holders. Aren't they pretty? I thought they were so different. And I like that brushed gold in them. It reminded me of my Turnpike Fair sign, which I showed you that I got thrifting a couple weeks ago. It has that brushed gold in it too. So first I thought I would put them maybe on the mantle, but then I got to thinking, wouldn't these look pretty in the kitchen dining area? So when you look in, you kind of see them all and kind of grounds that space a little bit too. Uh, the small one was only $3.99. And then this larger one, was $5.99. These were Goodwill, so I didn't have a coupon, but still, really good price. So my thought is 
to put the one right here. And then I'm gonna put the other one. And I don't think I'm gonna add a candlestick or a candle on top of them. You could put a candle, a flameless candle on them, but I think I just like them like this. So let me set them here. I like how they warm up the space and they tie in with the light fixture. And of course, as you look into the living room, kind of just brings it all together too. So kind of all flows really, really nice. So that was another thrift store find along with the chairs. And then also we got the faucet installed and look at how pretty it looks here. It is just such a pretty faucet and you know, just a simple, subtle change to change the look and the feel of the kitchen. I just love it. We installed it last night doing dishes after dinner. It was such a treat, just felt so different and so cozy. And I love that antique copper, super pretty in that gooseneck. Isn't it gorgeous? So just another change. So the space is really coming along. We got the door pulls in, the beams in, the light fixtures changed out. Now, one of the last things I'm gonna do is I have this towel bar that I picked up at Walmart that I'm going to hang in this space to hang some of my copper pots. So they do actually sell like pot racks, you know, holders, like wall mounted ones on Amazon, but I just liked this one and it was only like $12. I figured I'd get that. Plus I liked it, it was a little bit smaller. I also consider doing like the tension rod too, but I was just afraid of hanging a tension rod and then the weight of the pots bringing it down. So I wanted something anchored into the wall. So we're gonna get that hung. Now they didn't have any black um, S hooks. So I found these, I do have some black ones, but they were a little chunkier. Uh, so we're gonna spray paint these after we hang that, make sure I like the way that looks. But I wanted to show you also too, I was considering even maybe hanging a picture there too, which would look nice too. So I think I'm gonna do the pots for now. Um, so that's why I have some of the pots there I was holding them up to see how that looks. And I don't think I'm gonna do the wood in that space either uh, because then I think it's gonna hide some of the pots. But that is one of our last things. And then I think we're gonna be wrapping the kitchen up. And finally, I picked up a new rug for next to the sink too. And look at how pretty it looks here. I love the color of it. And I like that worn look. It's got that very like vintage look to it. It's also washable. I'll link it below too. And I like the way it looks against the cabinets. Of course, the new door pulls too. So that was another little change that I added as well. I just need to take the tag off of that too. So this room is definitely coming together and just a few more things and it will be done. I'm gonna clean up the chair so I can check that off the list. And I'm just gonna use my go-to thieves cleaner to clean it. I'm not even gonna worry about using a furniture pen to get out the little scratches right now. It really doesn't bother me and it's really not that much. So I'm just gonna clean them up and that is done. Also too, I wanted to mention, these are really nice heavy duty chairs. They're really heavy, so they're great quality and such a steal on those at the thrift store too. So I found this print a few days ago when I stopped at one of my favorite little antique stores. She had that there and I thought it was so pretty. So I picked it up with the intention of using it. Uh, for winter time in the pantry. Isn't it pretty? And then with like a wood frame. But then I put it here and I'm just like, oh, I love it. Especially if it had the wood frame too. It fits perfectly in the space. Of course, the scene really doesn't go for spring and summer. Um, but for the, you know, for winter, it would look really, really nice. So if I could find something similar to that, I thought that would work. But I think for the time being, we're just gonna do the pop wrap but this is always an option. I just had to show you how that looked too. Isn't this one pretty? It's a Courier and Ives print. Oh, I love this one so much. I couldn't wait to show you that too. Wayne is going to tackle the towel bar pot rack. He's just measuring it out and following the directions that it came with. It even came with a template. So it only took him about 15 minutes to get it all hung up. And then I will take over and hang up all of the pots. And I almost forgot to mention that we did change out the wall color. So I had originally painted with the Sherwin-Williams alabaster, but I wanted it to just flow with the tile. So we ended up painting it just plain white too. And I think I mentioned that at the beginning as well, but I just love how this towel bar pot rack turned out. 
he did use some heavier duty screws in place of the screws that it came with just because he of the weight of the pot so we know it's on there nice and secure i spray painted the s hooks and hung those up and now i'm going to have fun hanging up my pots of course one of the little hooks when i'm hanging it fell behind the oven but no worries got that and we were back in business And the final touch to make the kitchen smell homey and cozy is adding some wax melts to my wax warmer. I love these Antique Candle Co. wax melts. I love their candles too. I'll include a link and a coupon code below. I am burning Mama's Kitchen. It smells so good. And with a few simple changes like moving the microwave and adding this copper pot rack, changing out the faucet, the door pulls, adding a new light fixture, and adding the beams gave this kitchen a whole new look. Okay guys, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got some decorating inspo for your home as well. Give this video a big thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed the most and don't forget to click that little subscribe button so you never miss a video. You can also follow me over on my Facebook or Instagram page at Mother Time. You can also check out my blog at mothertime.com as well. Thanks again for joining me here today and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.